In a breakthrough that blends planetary science with seismic geophysics, researchers have confirmed that the colossal magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake that struck off Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula on July 29, 2025, has left a faint but measurable fingerprint on Earth's gravity field. The finding, drawn from data collected by the joint NASA and German Aerospace Centers Grace Foe, Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment Follow-on Satellites, represents one of the rare instances where the force of an earthquake has been detected not just by ground-based seismometers, but by spacecraft orbiting some 500 kilometers, 310 miles, above the planet. It is a reminder that truly massive geological events don't just shake the ground, they imperceptibly alter the distribution of Earth's mass, and with it, the local pull of gravity. This was not just any earthquake. Registering a moment magnitude of 8.8, .8, the Kamchatka megathrust event was the strongest anywhere in the world since Japan's devastating 2011 Tohoku earthquake. The rupture occurred along a subduction zone where the Pacific Plate is diving beneath the North American Plate, a geological fault system long known for producing monster quakes. According to preliminary models, the fault rupture stretched across an estimated 480 kilometers by 160 kilometers, about 300 by 100 miles, of oceanic crust. In just a few minutes, enormous slabs of the seafloor shifted upward and downward, displacing billions of tons of rock and seawater. It was this redistribution of mass that left its mark in space. To the casual observer, the concept of a quake changing gravity might sound like science fiction, but the underlying principle is straightforward. Gravity is a measure of mass, and when you move mass around, whether it's shifting rocks deep beneath the seabed or melting ice sheets in Greenland, you alter the gravitational pull in that region. These changes are incredibly small. In the Kamchatka case, the gravitational anomaly amounts to only a few millionths of a gal a unit of acceleration named after Galileo, or roughly one part in a billion of normal gravity. It's far too tiny for a person to feel, yet it's enough for the ultra-precise instruments aboard Grace Foe to register. The detection process is not a matter of a single snapshot, but a careful analysis of how mass distribution on Earth evolves over time. The Grace Foe mission, launched in 2018 as the successor to the original Grace satellites, was primarily designed to monitor large-scale changes in water storage, ice mass, and other climate-related variables. Its two identical satellites fly in tandem, about 220 kilometers, 137 miles, apart, continuously sending microwave and, in an experimental mode, laser signals between them to measure their separation with a precision of about two thousandths of a millimeter. When the leading satellite passes over a region of stronger gravity, it is tugged slightly ahead. The trailing satellite then experiences the same pull a few seconds later. By precisely tracking these minuscule variations in their separation, scientists can map subtle changes in Earth's gravity field. When the Kamchatka quake struck, ground-based seismic networks around the world instantly recorded the waves rippling through the crust. In Germany, over 9,000 kilometers, 5,590 miles from the epicenter, seismometers picked up just six millimeters, a quarter of an inch, of vertical motion from the passing tremor. But the Grace FO satellites were looking at a different signal entirely, not the vibrations themselves, but the longer-term shift in mass caused by the fault displacement. In the days following the quake, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Germany's GFZ Potsdam began combing through the gravity data. They first removed the usual suspects that can mask or mimic a gravitational change, the effects of tides, atmospheric pressure swings, and seasonal water movements in the oceans and on land. Once those influences were subtracted, a faint but distinct pattern emerged over the rupture zone, a lopsided gravity anomaly, with slightly increased gravity on one side of the fault and slightly decreased gravity on the other, matching exactly what theory predicts for a massive thrust fault event. Eric Ivins, a geophysicist at JPL who has long studied solid earth processes using satellite data, likens the finding to having an X-ray of the quake's deep mechanics. 
Subduction zone megathrusts shuffle mass deep in the mantle, he explains, and using satellite gravity data that detect shifts in mass, we can estimate both the duration and spatial extent of the flow in the mantle after an earthquake. There are no alternative observations that so directly measure this deformation beneath the sea. In other words, while GPS stations can record surface displacement and seismometers track vibrations, Grace Foe can detect the otherwise invisible rearrangements of rock miles below the ocean floor. Such detections are rare because most earthquakes, even those considered large in everyday news coverage, simply aren't big enough to generate a measurable gravitational blip. Only the very largest, magnitude 8.8 .8 and above, move enough mass over a large enough area to leave a detectable signature. Before Kamchatka, GRACE satellites had unambiguously recorded only three other post-quake gravity changes. The 2004 Moment Magnitude 9.1 Sumatra Andaman earthquake, the 2010 Moment Magnitude 8.8 .8 Maul quake in Chile, and the 2011 Moment Magnitude 9.0 Tohoku disaster in Japan. Each of these was among the most powerful seismic events ever recorded, and now Kamchatka joins that elite list. From a technical standpoint, the sensitivity of Grace Foe is astonishing. NASA notes that the satellites can detect the gravitational pull of a 300-kilometer wide disk of water just one centimeter thick. In earthquake terms, that sensitivity translates to picking up the redistribution of billions of tons of crustal rock, changes far beyond any human scale, yet subtle enough to be lost in the background noise unless carefully processed. The Kamchatka anomaly was only confirmed after cross-checking with independent seismic and geodetic models, ensuring that the observed gravity shift could not be explained by anything else. What makes this particular detection so significant to scientists is that it provides a new independent measurement of the quake's size, location and slip pattern. Seismic waves reveal how the Earth shook. GPS and radar satellites measure how the surface moved. But gravity data adds a third layer, showing where the mass ended up. When all three datasets are combined, researchers can reconstruct the rupture with greater confidence, refine estimates of the total seismic moment, and improve models of how such faults behave. In subduction zones, where much of the fault lies beneath deep ocean and cannot be directly observed, this integrated approach is invaluable. The ability to see an earthquake's gravity footprint from orbit is more than a technical curiosity. It opens a door to a realm of geophysical observation that, until very recently, was considered out of reach. On land, dense networks of GPS receivers and seismic stations can track how the crust shifts during and after a quake, but in remote subduction zones like Kamchatka, large stretches of the fault lie far offshore under thousands of meters of ocean water. Deploying instruments there is expensive, risky, and often impossible. That means some of the most important details about how the fault moved, particularly in the deeper sections, remain hidden. Gravity mapping from space fills part of that gap by sensing the mass changes regardless of whether they occur on land or deep beneath the sea. The Kamchatka event is especially valuable because it provides a rare calibration point. In a world where magnitude 9 earthquakes are once-in-a-generation events, each new example adds weight to the models that geophysicists use to understand subduction zones. The July 29th rupture was tied for the sixth largest earthquake ever recorded in the modern instrumental era. Its slip pattern, determined from seismic inversions and GPS data, suggested tens of meters of displacement along parts of the fault plain. That translates into billions of tons of rock moving abruptly, exactly the kind of mass shift that gravitational mapping is designed to detect. In the days after the quake, the Gracefo gravity map showed the anomaly as a faint distortion centered on the rupture zone. When visualized, the change resembles a subtle bullseye pattern, slightly positive gravitational acceleration on one side, slightly negative on the other. This reflects the way thrust faulting pushes mass upward in some areas and pulls it downward in others. The satellites were able to measure these changes despite the fact that the absolute difference in gravitational pull is minuscule, equivalent to the attraction of a single large mountain redistributed over hundreds of kilometers.
The processing chain required to isolate this pattern is as impressive as the measurement itself. Gravity data is notoriously noisy because Earth's mass distribution is always changing. Ocean tides, groundwater depletion, snow accumulation and even shifts in atmospheric pressure all alter the gravity field on daily to seasonal timescales. For the Kamchatka detection, scientists subtracted out the expected contributions from these factors using models and auxiliary observations. What remained was the earthquake's co-seismic signal, a sudden non-seasonal change exactly aligned with the known rupture area. This is why the detection is considered clean and robust. The timing, location and geometry all match what seismology predicts. Looking back, the first time a GRACE-type mission saw such a signature was after the December 26, 2004, Sumatra Andaman megaquake, a magnitude 9.1 event that unleashed one of the deadliest tsunamis in recorded history. In that case, the gravity change was of the order of one billionth of G, similar to what Kamchatka has now shown. Later, in 2010, the magnitude 8.8 .8 Maul earthquake in Chile, and in 2011, the magnitude 9.0 Tohoku earthquake in Japan produced similar anomalies. What's striking is that over more than two decades of satellite gravity monitoring, only four earthquakes have produced signals strong enough to be clearly resolved, and all of them rank among the most powerful on record. The physical explanation lies in the relationship between an earthquake's size, its fault area, and the amount of vertical displacement it causes. A magnitude 7 quake may be destructive locally, but typically moves far less mass over a smaller area. The resulting gravity change is swamped by normal environmental variability. In contrast, a magnitude 8.8, .8, like Kamchatka's, can rupture a fault hundreds of kilometers long, uplifting vast sections of the seafloor by several meters. This is enough to alter the gravitational field in a way that persists for months until slower geological processes begin to redistribute mass again. Beyond the immediate scientific triumph, the Kamchatka gravity detection has practical implications. Integrating satellite gravimetry with seismic and geodetic data could refine tsunami hazard assessments. Since uplift and subsidence patterns directly influence how much seawater is displaced, gravity data could help verify or adjust initial models after a quake. While real-time tsunami warnings will always rely on faster seismic and ocean buoy data, post-event gravity analysis can sharpen the understanding of what actually happened under the waves. The technology behind Grace Foe also points toward an even more sensitive future. The mission's Experimental Laser Ranging Interferometer, LRI, has already demonstrated about 30 times the precision of its microwave predecessor. In principle, this could allow detection of smaller mass changes, potentially including gravity perturbations from magnitude 8 or even high 7 earthquakes. However, that goal will require careful separation of the quake signal from the constant background chatter of Earth's hydrological cycle. The planned Grace Sea mission, due around 2028, is expected to carry improved instruments that could push the limits further. For now, the Kamchatka finding is also a reality check. Despite the sophistication of our monitoring systems, it still takes a truly massive quake to leave an unambiguous mark in the gravity record. It underscores how rare these events are and how much information they can yield when they do happen. Every great earthquake is a natural experiment in tectonics, and satellites like Grace Fuo are our orbiting laboratories. From the vantage point of space, the Kamchatka quake's gravitational ripple is a whisper in the data, but a whisper that tells the story of planetary-scale forces. It is the story of two immense tectonic plates locked in a centuries-long struggle, storing energy as they grind past each other, and then, in a matter of moments, releasing that energy in a burst of motion powerful enough to subtly tug on satellites hundreds of kilometers above. It is also the story of how human ingenuity has developed the tools to measure that tug, translate it into maps and numbers, and use it to deepen our understanding of Earth's most dramatic processes. While the aftermath of the Kamchatka quake was felt in tsunami warnings and seismic reports, its echo in the gravity field will quietly persist in the satellite archives, a data point to be revisited by scientists in years to come. As more such detections accumulate, patterns may emerge that reveal new aspects of earthquake physics, from the deep mantle flows that follow a rupture to the way stress is redistributed along the fault. 
For now, this detection joins a short but prestigious list of gravity-measured megaquakes, a reminder that space-borne eyes can see more than just clouds and coastlines. They can, on rare occasions, see the invisible shifts of the solid Earth itself. Ultimately, the July 29, 2025 Kamchatka earthquake stands as both a geophysical milestone and a technological achievement. It was a demonstration that the same satellites tracking melting ice sheets and draining aquifers can also bear witness to the sudden reshaping of our planet's crust. And in doing so, they bridge the disciplines of climate science, oceanography and seismology, offering a unified view of Earth as a dynamic, interconnected system. If this story of a silent gravity ripple born from one of the planet's most powerful quakes has captured your imagination, remember that science thrives when knowledge is shared. So if you found this insight fascinating, like this report, share it with others who are curious about the hidden workings of our world and subscribe for more deep dive explorations into the forces that shape our planet, both seen and unseen.